Okay. I already did welcome you to the webinar, but the new people that came on the last couple of minutes, welcome to the webinar. Like I said, grab a piece of paper and pen, and I'm going to give you a bunch of information and some tools and stuff like that, um, some locations where you can grab uh, access to different stuff. I like to. This is typically not going to be your normal webinar. I know uh, there's a lot of webinars that go on online, um, but I generally don't run things typically the way everybody else does. Why? Because I like to give good content and a ton of content, and I like to get it done in a fashionable sense, right? Because most people, like we you got some, some Aussies on here, some people from England and stuff like that. So it's late at night for you guys or early morning, and we don't want you to be, you know, struggling all, all morning after your, after the call. So we want, we want to get you information, get you excited about Pinterest, and, and get you going. Let me uh, just check the screen here and make sure everything's open so I can see you guys. Awesome. Okay. So I can see questions. So first of all, who is Mike Somerville? Well, if you don't know me, which there's a ton of people on here from my list and James' list, and we ran some advertising and stuff like that, um, I'm actually, but <laughs> it's kind of funny the way stuff's happened, but I'm actually pretty well known in the internet marketing industry. Uh, I do not really like stand out like the Frank Kearns and the Mike Phil Sains, but what I do do stays in people's minds because what I deliver on is ri ridiculous content. Uh, I'm one of these guys that really shoots from the hip and, and gives you content and information that's legit on the level and that you can use right now as soon as you get it from me. Uh, not only that, we teach in like Chamber of Commerce events uh, up until about two months ago. We, uh, we were running like three, four, th four, I think it was like four days a week at Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in the area, to all the you know local businesses and stuff like that. I have stuff. I have offline clients, online clients, Fortune 500 companies, stuff like that. So I'm well versed in local marketing, online marketing, offline marketing. Um, sometimes I'm unorganized. That's why we bring James on board <laughs> because I got too many projects on the go, and uh, we need to have somebody that says, "Yo, Mike, you got to do this." And uh, that's that's what I like is having people on board like that. So. I'm well versed in the information. I'm not one of these guys that just decided that I'm going to do a webinar today and let's pick a product or pick a, pick a topic. Um, we definitely exercise everything we do. So I'm going to get right into it here. So the the content going, the content too. This is not going to be slide. Like I said, it's going to be totally sometimes different than what you're used to, um, but it's going to be awesome. So over the topic of tonight's webinar is Pinterest. So what is Pinterest and how can it help you? Okay, Pinterest. If you haven't, you know. I mean, if you're missing this thing, there's there's probably, you know, a few people on the call that don't know much about it, but this thing's, you know, only about 12 million deep in users, so they didn't have a few users on board. Um, but it's a viral pin board. So, you know, like, you know, if you think of offline terms, you can think of like a scrapbook or, uh, you know, a curation, where, somewhere where you're accumulating stuff, images, pictures, videos, stuff that you like, you're interested in, uh, and want to remember later on. You know, like on Facebook, people are posting stuff, but if you don't stay on top of posts, it gets dropped down the feed, right, especially with Facebook's new algorithm and everything. So uh, with Pinterest, you can have boards organizing different interests and thoughts and stuff like that, and it's really an amazing tool and an amazing uh, opportunity for marketers and just people in general. So they, they, uh, they do real-time updates, so they have a feed, and we're going to show you all this live, but they have a feed where it's real-time updates when people are pinning that you'll be able to see and uh, it actually is more interactional than Facebook and Twitter. And a lot of people, you know, they think about, well, how is that more interactional? Because of the fact that you can't actually direct message people, invite them to events, the only interaction you have with the other people is commenting, repinning, and, and posting. So it, because we're a society that, that likes to share and post and, and basically tell everybody about our lives, it forces people to actually repin or comment on your stuff because they want to interact with that thing that you're sharing, right? People are prone these days and in the last, you know, five, six years that they need to interact with you. They need that. If they don't interact with you, they feel like they've lost something. It's wild, and I know my parents and my grandparents don't get it and they don't understand it, but for our generation and, and the generation that's online and getting this information and content, this is an amazing tool uh, for networking and, and business in general. So how does it work? By, by simply pin stuff. Like I said, uh, people pin images to Pinterest. Um, they organize them in boards. And, you know, you can create the board and you can call it whatever you want. So clothing I like or kitchen idea rental. So if you're, if you're going to be doing an, a renovation on your house or something like that, people will actually go through Pinterest or websites and stuff like that and pin different things to their boards 
and so they can remember it for later on rather than scrapbooking or, or printing it out. They're actually doing that. And the results actually show that the app that's on iPhone, people are actually using that more than the Facebook app. And Facebook's users use 50% the application. So out of the you know millions of people that are on every minute, 50% uh, of those people are actually using the application. Um, and I didn't, I forgot to mention that the reason why I throw a lot of Facebook stats out there is because I'm um, classified as a Facebook expert, Facebook courses, stuff like that. So I'm well versed in that stuff. So I'll compare stuff so you can understand uh, from A to B how everything is working. That's the best way because we know everybody knows so much about Facebook. Uh, so I like to compare both of them so you get. Um, when somebody visits Pinterest, his or her default view is a news feed of the latest pins from the people they're following or the people that are pinning that are following their boards. So it's pretty cool. We'll show you. you haven't seen it. Actually, how many how many people are on Pinterest right now that are on the call? Like, so we got tons of people on here, so I'm sure there's somebody in here that uh, awesome. Yep, yep, sweet. And how many of you guys are totally addicted to it? You can't. You get on there and you get what? You get deep. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> Only have an invite, so not yet. Well, we can get you an invite after this webinar. We'll make sure uh, Jim's going to take down emails and stuff like that, and we'll make sure you get an invite into the uh, Pinterest pinup. Yes, I have pinups. <laughs> Johnny says, yeah, I'm into pinups. <laughs> I'm a female, so I'm addicted. That's it. That's it. It's crazy. I mean, I looked at this thing originally six months ago, and I didn't think it was anything of interest to me. I spent about 24 hours on the thing, like over a week, and then I started getting results with stuff I was doing on it, and I'm like, holy crap. So I really started paying attention, and then like it was like over Christmas, this thing just blew up. And uh, it was really cool. So, yeah, so we're, so let's say probably about 5% of you guys are on it. That's awesome. So you're kind of going to understand a little bit of what I'm saying, and then when I get into the other side of stuff, you'll, you'll, you'll totally go have an aha moment. That's awesome. So if you, if you know the background of Pinterest or you don't know the background of Pinterest, the main reason why – uh, brands and businesses are on just or trying to uh, build up a strategy is the audience. Like Janelle said, it is she's totally addicted. So not only people are addicted to Facebook nowadays, but they become addicted to Pinterest. And it's sad to say, you know, it sounds bad, but it's really cool. And it's not, you know, it's a cool addiction. Right? You're on there, you're looking at stuff, and and actually, there's millions of dollars being transacted because of Pinterest. So it's. The transition between addiction of looking at pictures and videos and stuff like that to e-com is actually huge, and we're going to show you how that in, that comes together. So through Pinterest is quickly growing, attracting a, a subscriber base who are pinning, sharing, liking everything they can get their mouse on, and Pinterest is actually named in the top 10 websites. This site is not even that old, guys, and it's one of the top uh, social media forums, even though it's not really a social media type site. It is kind of social, but it's more of an interest-based. Um, their traffic jumped, and I mean jumped, 400% in the last few months, landing them over 12,000 million unique users. Not 12,000 page views, not 12,000 instances, 12, 000, or 12 million, sorry, I said 1,000 million users. That's huge for a new site that's not monetized, even though, you know, they did little shifty things in the beginning, but then they pulled out because they got traction. Um, you know, they're not monetized right now, and it's very, it's all VC money, so this thing is going to grow. They're, you know, Ben is fully invested into this site, the owner of it, and his team. They're, they're just amazing people. Um, and right now, this status, I, I, typed, I made a typo. I put 15.8. It's 17.8 minutes a day per user on average is spent on Pinterest. And, you know, there's probably higher than that stats. And... Average right now, so they're second to only YouTube. So the number one website right now that has the most traction, the most people sitting around and watching stuff and doing stuff is YouTube, we know. So Pinterest is second to that. So they're above Facebook right now, which is insane. So is Pinterest driving, and they're driving more referral traffic than YouTube, Google, LinkedIn combined, and Twitter. So they're, they're, it's just insane, the stuff that's going on with Pinterest. So... This is what we're here for, and, and we're going to get into how to use Pinterest and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, as business professionals, and, and I'm not too sure, uh, I, I'm sorry, I usually ask what everybody's into at the beginning of, of the call, but um, usually you're either in internet marketing or offline consulting or your business, your small business or anything like that, 
you'll usually end up on one of my calls. So I always like to show people how you can monetize the content I'm giving you. So ways to monetize this is there's if you're a real estate, mortgage, cars, the reason why I always put these niches because they're so huge, not only for offline consultants, but in our own business, is this is the kind of clients we have, my family's in this type of business. Um, so I know how to utilize this type of stuff for those niches, like unbelievably. So you can generate leads and customers for those specific things. Not only that, you can generate a, a list of niche people for whatever niche you're looking at. So everybody thinks right now, you know, Pinterest is only good for crafts and, you know, Martha Stewart's wedding stuff. I, it's not actually. Um, I don't know if you read in the media. I, I It was kind of funny. I got an email the other day. Somebody said, are you doing something crazy on Pinterest? I said, I didn't know what they were talking about. But there was a kid that went public that he was making between $1,000 and $2,500 a day on Pinterest using CPA marketing. And if you don't know what CPA marketing is, then it's a uh, cost per action. So like if you click on uh, an ad or something like that and then you do something on the other side, us as internet marketers will get paid for that. And this exact campaign this guy did, I use on Facebook uh, for different type of stuff, but he was using it on Pinterest and everybody called him a scammer spammer. Uh, it, I totally disagree with that. Um, but you know, it, it's your interpretation of scamming or spamming. <laughs> uh, but this kid's pulling down a thousand twenty five hundred bucks a day using Pinterest, and he just had an image that went viral, and it was for uh, I think it was the Starbucks. I think James, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was the Starbucks ad. And we run that stuff with a couple of our campaigns. You know, what what happens is when you click on the Starbucks, the Starbucks thing, it says your seventy five dollar gift card. And you'll go to a landing page that says enter your email or enter your zip code. And then on the other side, it'll have a, a few companies that are into internet marketing and they're going to want your email. So at the bottom of that page, it'll say um, you're opting into a list that other people are interested in getting. So there's full disclaimers and everything like that, which takes the scam part of it out of it and covers them for uh, the FTC. Um, and there's actually, I actually investigated it because when I was promoting it, I actually felt bad. And I wanted to make sure it was legit, and I investigated it. And there is actually people that do get those cards, so it's not, you know, it's not like it's the same thing. I use this example in one of my courses. You know, when you go here, we have fairs and, and and carnivals and stuff like that. And when you go to a fair or carnival, and you'll be walking in, I should have had an illustration of this because it's really got nothing to do with this slide, but it's really it's really key for you to understand marketing. Uh, when you're when you're at the fair, or you're in the mall or something like that, and you'll see a box in the middle of nowhere, and it says "Enter to win your free vacation." Well, the only reason why that box is there is for list generating, right? Because you put your name, your phone number, your email on there, and what your average spend is on a, on a vacation, right? So what does that do? That now qualifies them. When they call you, they can say, okay, I know Mike Somerville here. Here's his phone number. I'm going to give him a call. I know he likes to vacation, you know, in, in Honolulu and, and Cape Canaveral and all these places, right? Um, and he likes to spend at least $25,000 on his vacation. So when they call me and pitch me, they're going to start at twenty five grand, or in and around there, or they're going to offer me a $50,000 package at a discount of twenty five grand. So I'm a qualified warm lead. That's the same thing that that campaign was that everybody got upset about, only it's online. So that kind of, if you, if you heard that in the news, and you know, it was huge there the last couple of days, um, that's, the, that's the way that works. The same thing offline is as online. Can't you sign into? Uh, I'm just going to answer your question real quick. Can't you sign into Pinterest without using Facebook or Twitter? Right now, no. And why is the viral nature they want? Why have they hit 12 million users? Because they're integrating with Twitter and, and YouTube or Facebook. So when you sign up with Facebook, you will uh, invite your friends, and then it grows virally. Kind of the opposite to the way Facebook developed out. And this is the way a lot of things are going now. They want they want to have social interaction right off the hop, and that's the fastest way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I got pop-ups all over the map here. That's the fastest way for stuff to go viral is um, by you know having that that interaction right away. So if you get the advertisement, then lowball them. Yeah, if you get a call from a travel agent. That, that you signed up for because everybody's a winner. If you, I don't know if you know that or not, but everybody in that box is a winner. Um, we've, we've done stuff with that with companies before. It just depends on what you win. <laughs> That's basically what it is. 
Um, yeah, lowball them, man. Never pay full price for travel. I don't know why anybody thinks that they need to. <laughs> but that's off topic. But I like I like to answer questions and have interaction. Um, so uh, we'll get back to the slide at hand. <laughs> we use the traffic. Uh, we can use it for traffic conductors. I'm going to show you how the links and all that work uh, to get indexed in Google. This is crazy. If you don't know anything about the new Google uh, algorithm, they are like just blowing like people that are into SEO and everything down. So if you sat at the first page of Google for like the last five years, have fun getting back there because it's all done with all this new social proof and, and indexing on major sites and all that. So Pinterest is actually fully into in, indexed, just like Facebook is, fully open to uh, to Google to grab, and it's all do follow link. So any link that's in Pinterest is a do follow link, and you'll get traction right away, and you'll get you know your PR rating and all that stuff. So it's huge, and it, this kind of counteracts your de-indexing. So if you get a lot of pins up, and you got your links in them, and it's from a bunch of different people, that means you're going to get traction in in, in the uh, the search engines, which is huge. And there's a lot of people not really emphasizing that, but that is a huge part of Pinterest that works great. Um, and if you're if you're looking to become a local marketing expert, or if you are a local marketing expert, this is a great uh, tool to add to your uh, resource. I was actually on a call the other night with a girl, and she is uh, well. I'm not going to name her name because I don't do that kind of stuff. But she's a well-known um, offline consultant, so she does internet marketing for offline businesses. So businesses come to her office and they want to get online. They need to have branding, you know, exposure. Excuse me, and they go to her, and she charges. I think it is like $4.97 uh, per per medium, like so $4.97 for Facebook, $4.97 for YouTube, stuff like that. And then she charges a percentage uh, per transaction, stuff like that. I usually just charge a retainer plus a percentage of advertising. Then that way we don't get into all a bunch of stuff. But anyways, when I was talking to her, she set up over. She has ten clients right now that are fully engulfed in social media. And she has a bunch of other ones that basically just kind of all over the map. Anyways, she set up 10 accounts the other night. Took her, I think it was like 15, 16 minutes. Put a, a few pins. So she created three boards, put five pins in them to make the board look full with the image. And I'll show you that in a minute. And she charged each one of those people $497. Boom, done. And now if they want her to maintain those, she charges her hourly rate or her percentage. So right off the hop, you can make a ton of money with this, and, and it's all legal. Like, it's not illegal. You can do that. That's a part of a service, right, using a tool, and you're providing a service. So there's a ton of different ways to, to use Pinterest to your advantage um, and understanding it. And once you get the grasp of Pinterest and you understand everything's running, it, it's insane. So we all know that the early adapters are the ones that make the most money, get the most traction, and we want to make sure you're on riding the, the Pinterest wave right now. So, you know, I was an early adapter of Facebook. I got on Facebook, like, the minute they allowed colleges in Canada to get into it, right? And that's what I used when I was in the entertainment business to fill up our, our clubs and, and promote the, in the entertainment business. And uh, that's how I started out in Internet marketing, and then I got into a bunch of other stuff. But So I was an early adapter of Facebook, and that's why I adapted all these new principles and, uh, you know, and became a really good Facebook expert. So right now, if you jump in the Pinterest wave, because this thing hasn't peaked, it's still climbing. If you jump on it, you're going to be able to ride the wave. You're going to be an early adapter, and when the new development comes, like they're going to have private boards coming in the next month. They're going to have API access coming in the next month. There's talks of advertising going on on this site. So if you're in the, in the beginning of it and you understand how it's working, and as each thing comes out, you're already ahead of the game. You'll be able to, to just jump in and be like, oh, yeah, you know, this is what we're doing here, blah, blah, blah. The same, the same way all these guys that are making millions of dollars on Facebook is what you'll be able to do by adapting Pinterest in the early ages. So that's what we want to, we want to do that. So I'm gonna, right now I'm going to take you to some live content. This is what I like to do. I don't know why people don't do this uh, on a regular basis. Um, it, it blows my mind, but you got to get that live content. So I want to show you guys um, right now how Pinterest is indexed. So I'm going to right now I searched Martha Stewart. So this is what's in the in the media right now. So this is why I picked this. She did three million dollars this year so far from Pinterest traffic. Her traffic from Pinterest uh, consists of 20 percent of her overall referral traffic. So she's getting 20 percent of her referral traffic, which translates into three million dollars for free. 
because people are pinning, she's pinning, you know, her team's pinning, stuff like that. So if we go down here, this is page one, right, page one. If we go right here, I don't have my, I can't use my pin because I'm not using, uh, uh, what should I call it? I don't think they have them here. Uh, normal draw arrow. Yeah, this might work. So if you see right here, this is, does anybody see that arrow? James, can they see that arrow? I've never used that before. That's funny. I use the use. Yeah, that's it. I usually use Camtasia, and I can just draw on it. Um, you can see that that is Pinterest, right? So it's a profile picture from her Pinterest, right? So that's just how um, how this thing is getting indexed. It, it's crazy, okay? So I want to take you now into Pinterest. I'm going to just open up the audience view here, guys, so I can make sure that uh, there's no lag, and you guys can see it. I haven't seen any complaints come in, so I just want to make sure. Okay. So here is Mod Plot. So they are actually in the top, you know, uh, the top Pinterest, top referred, stuff like that. They're getting a lot of traction. And they have right now, let me grab my trusty arrow again. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it off my phone. It's got nothing to do with my computer or anything. It's uh, all Canada. They suck where I live. Okay. Awesome. All right. Sorry about that. As long as you guys can me now, we're going to have to yeah. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't screw up any more for us as we as I'm going to run it off the phone. Switch to Rush. I wish I could. I wish I could switch off. I can't get anything but Bell Canada here in the part of Ontario. I'm in. <laughs> so we can hear you, but it sounds like you're on the phone. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. That's how you know this is live, not recorded. This is live, my friend. We are live tonight. <laughs> Hockey night in Canada. <laughs> All right. So let's, well, let's. we'll get back to where we're at. Okay, so what, what I said was this is the mod clothing one. And uh, as you can see here, they have 16,000 followers, 16,648 followers, okay? And they're following 216, so they're not following anybody. So probably the guy that created the account ended up getting on there and, uh, you know, followed some of his friends and stuff like that. So, uh, just make sure the volume is up here so you guys can hear. <laughs> pop-ups, man, pop-ups, okay. So, on their board, you can see that they have a bunch of different stuff that they've created. So, they have uh, craft and inspire, they have design time, so a bunch of different stuff that they're either interested in as a, a social way, or stuff that they sell, right? So they're clothing and stuff like that. But if we look at this uh, this board here, it has 151 pins. And if we come in here, we said that they were they had how many followers? They had 16,600, right? So just under 17,000 followers. If you notice on this board, they have just over 25,000 followers. Right, so twenty five thousand one hundred ninety seven. So what does that mean? It's probably like, oh, that's great. What that means is just because, not just because they have sixteen thousand followers. So when they post something to their board, sixteen thousand people are going to see that. Well, the difference is you can have followers on each one of your boards. So there's a bunch of guys in here that have thousands, a hundred thousand followers, but their boards have millions of followers. So when you, that's what a lot of guys miss. They think, oh, I'm just sending stuff out to 16,000 people. Well, you're not. You're sending stuff out to individual board on a per follower basis. So these guys are reaching 16,000 plus an extra 10,000 almost, right? So that's 25,000 people that every time they post one of these things get to see that, right? And if they repin it or they like it or they comment on it, then everybody on their board see it. So as you can see here, this one has 36 likes, 112 repins. Uh, this one has 161 repins, 51 repins. So people are like just loving the crap out of this. Like we said, they pin, repin, and they love it. And mod is getting a ton of traffic and sales. Like they're they're making a ton of money from Pinterest. I haven't been able to get the results. Uh, of, I haven't heard about the results, and I haven't been able to find the results. But I know they're getting a ton of traffic from this just because of my traffic uh, alert stuff that I use, and uh, it's just crazy. So what happens now is. Each one of these sites, each one of these images is linked to their site, okay? So if you click on this, 
it would go to their website or where they're selling this product. Okay. Not only that, so that links in there. They have this section, which is probably a section on their website. Then they have a link here, right? So now they have a link here, a link here, a link here. So Google's going to come on this page and be like, "Holy crap! There's a lot of link juice here. There's a lot of relevant, you know, relevant keywords because all these hashtags Google recognizes as keywords, right? So it's going to put all that together, and then it's going to say, "All right, let's index the crap out of this guy." So that's the power of Pinterest right now. I have. Uh, I'm going to show you Martha Stewart. Okay. So Martha Stewart has. Wait for the wait for the thing to catch up so you guys can see it. Martha Stewart has twenty eight thousand followers, just under twenty nine thousand followers. She's following twenty or thirty eight people, so she ain't following anybody. She's one of those celebrities that doesn't follow anybody, doesn't give a crap about anybody. So she's probably just following her direct competition, so she can see what her competition's doing. So if we look at these boards, not a lot of pins going on, right? And this is her direct board. Now she has Martha Stewart weddings, Martha Stewart uh, furniture, all that stuff. So they have different websites have different Pinterest accounts, which is the smart thing to do, right? So you can track everything separately. So if we go in and we look at her boards. Let's pick a board that's got a ton of stuff on it. So jewelry trip tips and trends. So if we open up this one, there's no followers. <laughs> so that one didn't work out too well. As you can see, her jewelry and stuff like that on here, and with video driving it, and then people will click it, and they'll go with them kind of stuff, right? Uh, I think it's Martha Stewart. Let's check out Martha Stewart weddings. I think this is the one that's got a ridiculous amount of. All right, what is search? I'm going to show you guys how the search works. So this will kill, kill two birds with one stone. So everything in, in, in Pinterest is not logged in. Is there a way to tell when something was posted on the board? Yeah, there's there's time. We'll show you that in one second. Um, so this is the main, right, like, like I said, I'm not randomly generate stuff, so there's not uh, spam. It goes by your pins, repins, your followers, stuff like that, stuff up there like current. Uh, stop. So if we search up here in the search box at the very top, we search Martha Stewart Weddings. As you can see, the keyword Martha Stewart and Wedding brings up a ton of stuff, not only on her her uh, boards, but everybody else's board. So they're pinning stuff from her website. So we can find, see if we can find her board here. She's all these decor, all these other company pinning her stuff. This is why she's getting a ton of traffic because everybody's pinning her stuff. But anyway, it doesn't matter. What I was going to show you was one of her boards has like a thousand pins. Inside there, it has like 60,000 followers, yet there's only about 30, just over 30,000 followers of the actual profile. So I was going to show you how it works and how the traction works. Yeah, and there's questions about how your keywords are boards. Yeah, we're going to get into that right now. I'm going to log in here, and uh, we're going to get into it. And I'm going to show you a couple more things. Trying to stay around an hour on this, but I want to give you enough content, and we just had the hiccup with the phone. So I'm going to have to uh, put my own satellite up in space so that when my webinars are going on, I can't I have no uh, issues. Because <laughs> this is the second time, and I've never had that happen prior to, to getting to moving to this new house. So, okay, so this is uh, this is my personal board. It's like no rhyme or reason to anything that's going on it. I use it as an example for training videos and clients and stuff like that. Um, my boards that I use for generating traffic, I'll never show you <laughs> because I don't want you to compete with me. But typically, if you follow me, um, you'll understand what I do. It's just social media stuff and uh, helping out clients and stuff like that. So we go in and we get their like forward slash, the car dealer name and all that stuff. And stuff like that. So 
what we'll do is we'll bring up my profile and we'll show you. So here is the profile. It's pulling my Facebook image and it's putting it in there. So you'll see a bunch of random stuff on here because I'm showing people how to do stuff and using it for training videos and stuff like that. So right now, this is the new Pinterest. They've changed it like three times since I've been a member of it. And right now you can edit your profile and you can rearrange stuff. So you can click here and you can rearrange pins. Now why would that matter? Why does rearranging your board matter? Well, as English people, English writing people, or I know uh, different cultures read differently, but as an English person, um, we read left to right, right? So you would put the most important board on the furthest left side. So that's a great feature. And when they, when they came out with it, I thought that was brilliant because once you have that board to the left side and it's the most relevant board, then when people come to your profile from either Google or somewhere, wherever they're coming from, the first thing they should be able to see is that board, and that's what's going to attract them. Or they're going to see a board with an image that makes a ton of sense, right? So when you land on my board, what stands out? Probably these people of an, an image of somebody and this free beer, right? So this free beer thing, with a, a, this board is completely um, something I, I created to show um, how to set up like marketing funnels. I'm going to show you, uh, I'll use this as an example. And I'm going to show you the other board, which gives you the offline example. So here we have uh, free commission software, uh, free commission system software. So this is uh, going to a squeeze page. I'll show you the squeeze page. Get this here. I'll show you the squeeze page. Any, all the links inside that board go to this site. It's eliteearners.com forward slash PG. Okay? So it's for a ClickBank product. Um, and what we did is to get them on our list is we give them free uh, software, like free, I think it's a PDF creator. And then they'll get on our list, and then we can, there's a, a follow-up sequence right away that starts getting them, you know, interested in opening emails and stuff like that. And probably if you're on my list, and James admits is you've probably been through one of these funnels. So this is what I'm doing with this funnel. This is an example of how Internet marketers can use it legally and inside the terms of agreement. So when somebody clicks on an image in here or clicks that link up there, it's going to take them to that squeeze page, and they can opt in or bounce off, whichever. It doesn't matter, right? But we're trying to get them to opt in. So I'm using images here for that purpose and that reason. And when I'm using images to target somebody, you're probably going to be like, well, why is that infographic there that takes up like three screens? Because when that ends up on the main feed of something, it's going to take up three screens. It's going to take up a majority of that board. So it's going to take up the whole space. Like I showed you in the main feed where all those boards, all those pins were. If my pin was beside there, it would take up like six pin areas. So that's going to be a point of interest. People are going to see that and they're going to want to like figure out what it is, right? So we'll click it and then they'll probably click it again and then they'll end up on my website. So what we did is, if you look at this one here, this image, when clicked, goes straight to that squeeze page, right? So the image is linked to the squeeze page, and then we have high relevant key to keyword terms. And if you look in the bottom, as I'm going over these hashtags, it's actually pulling up a query. So if I click this, it's going to query everything inside Pinterest with that hashtag. How much, like, do you see a huge amount of value in that right now? So if you have, say, money, if you have a ton of pins that has the hashtag money, and somebody clicks that hashtag and they query money, do you think that you're going to come up in that query? Of course you are, right? And if you have an image or a text image or a video that's relevant or that's interesting, they're going to click that, right? So not only is that great for personal, you know, whatever, it's great for businesses, right? So if businesses... Uh, in, in a local business, for example, a plumber. So a plumber has an Im a funny image of a guy on a toilet or something, something that's funny. There's all kinds of these weird images out there, right? So he posts it to his board, has that hashtag there, somebody clicks and they're like, oh, what's this? And then he has a bunch of other images. He's going to now start getting traction inside traffic, right? So when people are querying plumber or they hit Google for Belleville plumber and he has a ton of hashtags with Belleville plumber or a ton of images on Pinterest with Belleville plumber, Who's going to be ranked number one? 
He doesn't have to go into Google Places or Google Maps and, and try and get ranked and pay a guy like five grand to get ranked in there. He can get ranked in here, right? So it's you as a social media consultant or an offline multi or an offline consultant can set them up at affordable price and get the results that they want. And then they don't have, you know, then they can go in and edit themselves. So that's huge. And, and if you're using Pinterest right now, one of the main things tonight, what you need to do is you need to start implementing hashtags. Hashtags, hashtags, hashtags. That is keywords, your keyword tags. That is how you're going to, in turn, get the result that you want from Pinterest. Okay? So how do we, so, so what if we edit, say, what if we pin an image from a number, another site? So we wanted that image on our board, but we didn't want to send traffic to them. I'm going to show you how to, how to edit that right now. So when you come to the pin, you click the image. At the top here, it's going to say edit. And if you click that, it's going to bring up this. I just want to, I just want to do a quick check. Is everybody with me so far? I'm not going too fast. You're kind of, you might not be getting it, getting it, but you're, you're kind of following. Awesome. Yes. Good. Good. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to record it, and I'll edit out the part where there was that, that, that delay of me going to the phone and stuff like that, and we'll bring the audio up. We'll record it. It should turn out fine. Um, so do you see a ton of, right now, do you see a ton of value in Pinterest, not only as a tool for fun social, but as a, a tool for your business? Can you, you guys are getting that so far? Awesome. Awesome, 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 great. I, I, I always like to make sure that I'm, I'm getting the, across the points that I want to get across because I do stuff totally different. Like you're, you could probably watch five different Pinterest webinars, and mine will be the most jam-packed full of content, but I like to make sure I'm getting it to the point where you're understanding it. So that's why I like to ask uh, questions. Is there a ton of competition with the hashtags? I would assume so right now, no, because I have huge traction with with hashtags, and in the last week, I've seen it pick up because there's a few videos out that are talking about it. Um, but from the angle in which we would use it, no, because if you're an internet marketing or offline, offline or a business, and you get this and you understand the keywords, the description, the links, and everything, you're going to destroy anybody else. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, just like I told people when when we were teaching them on Facebook, they're like, "Oh, there's a lot of people on Facebook, 800 million people." doesn't matter. No matter what niche I go into on Facebook, I crush because I know how to use Facebook, right? 800 million people. All I need is like a, a million to buy a $1 product, and I'm a millionaire, right? So there's 12 million people on, on Pinterest right now. At the end of the month, the end of April, it could be like 15 million. So I wouldn't get too wrapped up in competition, but that's definitely something that, depending on what you're into. So if you're into like uh, personal bags or, you know, clothing or stuff like that, yeah, there's going to be a ton of stuff on here. But most of them, unless they're paying a consultant or have taken a course or something like that, really don't know how to, to set it up properly. And that's where you're going to totally um, crush them. Uh, somebody's asking to define hashtag. So hashtag is that number sign and then uh, a word at the end of it. So on Twitter, you know, people are like, Yo, you know, Matt Tim Horton's just saying. And they'll have like hashtag and then uh, a word. Well, that on, on, on uh, Twitter, that's used to gain uh, relevancy. So if you uh, go on Twitter and you click trending, they go by trends is equal to the hashtags. So that's the only way that Twitter knows what's trending is because the hashtags. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, James, for putting that up there. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So a hashtag is that number sign and then a word. And then that's what is a, basically a keyword inside Pinterest and, and Twitter. If you're a brick and mortar type business or spa or service, business or what would you start to think about using it all day long? If you're a brick and mortar, this is brilliant for you. Why? Because if you join with Facebook, people are going to come over here that are on your Facebook side, and they're going to join. But not only that, if you're so you said you're um, let me look back here, like a spa or service. That's genius, right? So if you have girls in there that are that are putting nice makeup or I, I don't, my wife goes to that kind of stuff, so I don't know like all the keyword terms for for going to a spa, I just get a massage, that's about it. But, you know, if they're going in for an eyebrow wax or something like that, take a picture of that, put it up there. If they're doing some makeup, some high-end stuff, put it on there. Put your link to your website. Put the hashtag in there. Put the description in there. People are going to see it. They're going to repent it. 
You know, if there's a cool hairstyle that somebody did at your spa or your hair salon, put it on. Just put anything you can put on there that's relevant to your business or service, and it's going to end up getting indexed in Google. People are going to like it. They're going to they're going to hit it. An example: uh, a few months ago, uh, my wife's cousin is a very talented um, hairstylist. We went down, uh, and she wanted to put these designs in my hair. And I don't know if you've seen a picture of me. If you Google Mike Somerville, uh, you know, I'm a pretty lanky guy. So I had this design in the side of my head that wrapped around and came around the other side. It was, it looked, I thought it looked cool anyway. But she wanted to post it to Facebook because she gets clients from Facebook inside her, her profile only. She doesn't know how to do the pages. I keep trying to teach her. She doesn't want to listen to me. But if you do that on Pinterest, the same thing, it's going to grab traction. So if you put, um, I don't know the different hairstyles, but we put like cool de cool hairstyle design side of head, right? If somebody's typing in Google, um, what designs for my hairstyle, blah, 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 or something like that, you're going to grab it. They're going to go to Pinterest. I'm going to show you an example in a minute. And you could then get traction and traffic from that. I just gave you a $500 consulting right there. <laughs> Check, please. No, I'm just kidding. But that it, it's, I get excited about it because there's so many different ways you can do it that's inside Pinterest terms of agreement and stuff like that that everybody's all upset about and these ethics and all that. And there's nothing wrong with anything that you could do with that. You could get huge traction. Uh, another one that works really well is like um, if you're following home, this home sense in Canada. I don't know what it is in the States, but they pin like every friggin' item they have in their store and they're getting a ton of traffic. So it's really cool. Um, there's another question come in. FB pages for plumbers don't attract much in the way of fans. Will this work for plumbers and driving traffic? Yeah, for sure. I'm not too sure. Um, I mean, my, the guys that I help out, they're getting, they're getting uh, fans and stuff like that. Um, but you definitely, definitely, you can integrate both of them in the same time. So you could have people going from Pinterest to Facebook, Facebook to Pinterest. And in between, catch them in your list. And what you want to do is, at the end of the day, you want to build a list, right? So you have clients, you can call them up and, and start building your clientele. Is he swanky to you? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, somebody asked, is he swanky too? I don't know what that means. <laughs> can you please clearly read the question? Sorry. No problem. I'll, I'll clearly. What they're asking is uh, for the, the last question was uh, is Facebook must be their Facebook page is struggling to get fans, so they're wondering if if using Pinterest would help them out with that. And for sure, as long as you understand how to do that, do you have a link to Pinterest and Facebook for Twitter? I'm not sure what you mean, Mark. Um, do I have a link to Facebook and Pinterest? Oh, am I linking the two together? Is that what you mean? You don't have to tie them together at all. You don't. I mean, I I know a couple of people that don't know how to market on Facebook, and they're using Pinterest. And like Martha Stewart, I said, is getting twenty percent traction or twenty percent of her traffic from Pinterest to her site. So that's direct. I link everything together because that's what I do. I build like social web and link everything together. So it works really good. Promoting alcohol. I, I don't. As far as I know. They just don't want boobs and stuff like that, like pornographical material. So if you have an image of a drink or a wine, if you're a winery or something like that, I can't see them ever saying anything like that. I might, I might have said boobs in out of context there. I apologize if I offended anybody, <laughs> but they don't want any porn. I know they don't want any pornographical material on there, anything like that that would, uh, um, you know, create issues. But there is, I see wine glass like. Um, that's, what's that wine? They have a yellow, um, yellow trail, yellow trail. They have a Pinterest page that has a lot of followers, and they have all their different wines. And when they're out and about with their, with their uh, caravan and stuff like that, and they're using it. Yeah, yellow, yellow trail. Yep. Yeah, they have a, a Pinterest account. They're doing, they're doing pretty well. You can use whatever you want. As long as it's not, it's an image, a text image. I'm going to show you what I'm trying to get into. Um, you can use a text image, image, um, video, whatever you want. So it, as long as it's a, a, a hard good, you can bang that up there. Like a what? 
uh, somebody's asking me what a good email is for you to stay on top of your ideas. I'm not sure what that means for bio. Oh, you to get. Oh, okay, okay. I'll go back to Mars' question. Mars' question was, do you have to link Facebook and Twitter to get into to you, uh, Pinterest? You have to have a Facebook or Twitter account. Once you're a member, I can show you. You can change it out, so you can just from your avatar, like your your um, your image, just change it out. So what I do is for different accounts, I have like seven or eight different Twitter accounts, and then I have like a bunch of different Facebook accounts, and then I use those accounts to get me into um, Pinterest. But once you're a member, you can email yourself invites like five at a time, right? So you can create. And there's nothing that I've read that has anything to do with. Um, not having multiple accounts because I, I mean there's guys that have Walmart as a keyword and it's not Walmart <laughs> I'll just say that for now um, so are there copyright issues to be concerned with? they they are saying there's copyright issues but they also say in their third-party stuff so if you go to coca-cola's website and you pin it if coca-cola is gonna mad, get mad at you I highly doubt it if you're using that coca-cola image to make millions of dollars Yes. If you're using that Coca-Cola image to send to a landing page, I can't see why. You know what I mean? So if you're sending traffic directly to a buy now button from that Coca-Cola image, then I would assume that they would freak out. Um, but, yeah. Let me, get, let me just get the content done, guys, and then I'll answer more of your questions. I don't want to lose any. I mean, we're not losing anybody, but I want to make sure I get through the content. It's pretty obvious that with what I have presented, you guys are getting the idea, and I'm loving it. I'm excited. Thank you for that. That 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 gives me like, you know, makes me all excited when people get what I'm saying because I'm I'm kind of a nerd, and, and I really enjoy this kind of stuff. And and when I get a chance to share it with people, um, it definitely encourages me that when you when you understand what I'm trying to share with you. So again, so we well back to what we were saying was we clicked on edit on the tab or on the the pin. And then we ended up here. So there's our image, our description. So this here is the description that shows up there. Right? So that's the description that shows up underneath the video. So in here is where we can put our description. It's 500 uh, characters. There's quite a bit of stuff we can put in there. But the main thing you want to do is a description of, of your image and then have relevant keywords. The worst thing you could ever do, and I see this a lot with big brands, I'm talking big brands. They'll have a relevant image of a pin to their board, but then they have nothing in the description. So what is the worst thing they can do is have a, a really cool image, but have nothing in the description. So it's not going to get searched. It's not going to get indexed. People are going to look at it, and they're going to be like, well, what the hell, right? Because there's no description. People love to associate description with image. I don't know why. I hardly ever read anything. Um, I usually, like, I'm a, a visual learner, a visual, act, you know, practitioner. Um, but that's what happens. That's what works. That's what, what gets them going. So then, as I said, if we were to pin uh, something from another website, right here in the link that links that image would link to their website. So like you said about the Coca-Cola thing, if you, if you uh, pin something from Coca-Cola to your pin board, it would show up something here about Coca-Cola. What we could then do is come in and change the link so then now we're going to get traffic from it right so that's the cool part about that and then here we can select what board we want it we want to jam it onto right so it's pretty cool um, so that's that, that that right there is if you want to if you want to put a name on that for you offline guys and you online guys if you want to name this section it might just to the to the average user of Pinterest it might just look like oh cool I can post an image put a description and the link and pin it to a board but when I look at that, I look at call to action, keyword terms, my link to my website, and relevant traffic. That's what I look at, right? And that four little actions is what I look at. And that's the difference between guys that are using Pinterest as a business and people that are using Pinterest as just for fun, right? Join the Pinterest waiting list. <laughs> Somebody went and joined the Pinterest waiting list. Yeah, you got to be invited. So um, if you want to, at the end of it, we'll go, we'll uh, we'll get you guys invited. That's what we'll do. So we're going to go back, and when I said, uh, 
I want to make sure I cover the, the a majority of how this is running. So we'll go into the profile, and this is for the people that are asking, if you link your Facebook, can you change it out? 100%. Not only can you change out your information, you can change out your keyword, so your username. So your, .com, your Pinterest.com forward slash username, you can change out like by the second if you wanted to. So say you're, let's say you're Frank Kern, and I don't know, I, I've, I've been on this thing with Frank Kern, I created a lot of controversy yesterday on Facebook, and so that's why Frank Kern's on my mind and had a conversation with him. Anyway, so if you're Frank Kern, and today you're, you know, forward slash Frank Kern, but tomorrow you wanted to launch, he's got a product called Mind Control. So if he wanted to get the keyword Mind Control, he could come in here, change his username to Mind Control, and away he could go. Now, it, I mean, there's way too many ways that you could use this to, to benefit yourself. Um, I mean, you could just go over this for hours. It just depends on whatever you're going for, whatever keyword you're going for, whatever you want. So if you wanted to create an account uh, as a real estate agent, and say today you're Belleville, I live in Belleville, Ontario, so just if you're wondering why I say Belleville, you're in Belleville, Ontario, and tomorrow you're in, I don't know, Windsor, Ontario. You changed, you moved. You can come in here and say, Windsor, Ontario real estate agent, or Belleville, Ontario real estate agent. So you get that relative keyword in the search in Google, and you can change it at all times. When are they going to close this down? I have no idea. We know with Facebook, we can only change it once, right? Um, and then you can't change it again. As far as I know from watching um, meetings and VC meetings and stuff like that on Pinterest, they have no thought of changing that. There's been a bunch of people that have you know, been talking about it and stuff like that. They might block out the fact that you can't get brands because there's Sony and it's not actually Sony. There's a bunch of guys that have stuff and they're not actually what they are. Um, genius on their part. Other part, other people might think they're scammers, but it is what it is. Um, so. That's what you can do. So if you're if you're linking your Facebook account, you can come in here and change your name. So if you're a business, right? So say on um, Mike Somerville's consulting, right? So I could put Mike Somerville here as the first name, and then consulting here, right? So then now that's going to get searched in Google. So now I could put Mike Somerville. We'll just leave that as that. And then down here, why does it want to know my location? Keyword relevant. So it's going to know in Belleville, Ontario, Canada. Mike Somerville Consulting exists, right? And then they're going to take the About section, and then they're going to put that all together. And then it's going to get indexed in Google. So we could change that, and what I'll do is I'll, and you can go here. So you can change here. If you don't want to send stuff to Facebook, you can say turn Facebook off. If you don't want to be um, add Pinterest to, to your timeline, so on your timeline on Facebook, you can turn that off. You can turn everything off. I don't ever turn anything off because I like to be everywhere at once, but only in one location. So I like to be as viral as possible. And as you can see, I don't have hide um, from Google. I'm just waiting for this to load. <laughs> once again, we're struggling. So as you can see, guys, at the top, we changed it to Mike Somerville Consulting. So now we have Mike Somerville Consulting up there as a relevant keyword, right? Then over here I have my Facebook account right there. Let me grab my pen so you guys can see it because there's a lot of monotones here. So we have the Facebook account right here. We have a location here, which will end up in Google Maps, and then this is the website that I want them to go to. So that would be Elite Earners, right? So does that so far you guys get that section? That that's cool. You understand that the keyword relevance. You could even do, if you're an SEO guy, you could do, and you want to go for like high local marketing stuff, you could have like some high end stuff up here, here like Michael Somerville Consulting, Valvo, Ontario, Michael Somerville Consulting, Valvo, Ontario, and here. Like it could just get crazy and it's all going to get indexed because the algorithms right now are matching Google, which is brilliant for us. Yep. Yep. You can, it's the same as, it's the same as Facebook. James answered that question, but I'm going to answer it out loud for But they're asking, can you create an account without your name and still have relevant stuff all day long? So if you're a, uh, like, uh, if you're a guitar, you sell guitar lessons and stuff like that, you could be like Mike Summerville's Guitar Lessons and then have a bunch of stuff underneath it, right? So this is, 
you can have five or six accounts, have 100 accounts if you can maintain that. At this point, on, on Facebook, I, I preached against having multi-accounts because you can use one account to do a bunch of stuff. But on Pinterest, creating a Pinterest link wheel is brilliant, right? So liking your own stuff and pinning your own stuff is a genius way. And at this point, I'll, I'll say that that's a good tactic because I have never found, I've never found a reason why it wouldn't work or why it's not legal or why it's not inside the TOS. So if it becomes outside the TOS, then I'll start telling people not to do it. But I like because I market very, very, very inside the rules. I'm very FTP approved, you know, FTC approved. Like I don't like to market outside there because I don't want to have to pay my lawyer millions of dollars. IP address, of, yeah, of course they're going to have your IP address. I don't know if they log it. Um, I have no problem, guys. I come from the same IP all day long every day, so I have no problem, no interruption in service, no emails from their spam com or policy, compliance, nothing. So, like I said, if anything happens to me, it will happen to me first before it happens to you. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to show you real quick this section. So what I did is I had an example for a real estate agent who's asking how can I use Pinterest for my real estate company, right? So I showed here in this board highly relevant keyword terms for Belleville uh, real estate. So what we did is we pinned it, we put the description of the uh, of the the house in there, and then we had the website back to the listing, and then we had Quincy Real Estate Homes for Sale and Rent, which is huge relevant keyword terms, and it says Quincy in here for sale and rent, and it, it's just been crazy. So you can see here we have uh, the followers on. I think that's more followers than I have on my other side. So it's work. It's working pretty good. Um, let's see if anybody pins them or anything. I just use this as a test account. Originally pinned by Monk Somerville, pinned by FromWeb. Yeah. So there's some pinning going on here. Also, what it does. Now this is another viral aspect of Pinterest. These guys are brilliant. Like Ben, when he came up with this idea, was brilliant. As soon as you pin something, Pinterest automatically runs through its database and integrates everything together. So as you can see here, uh, originally pinned by Mike Somerville, right here, right? But it says pinned via web. So I was on the website when I pinned it. So now it's going to pull everything that's pinned via that website on here, and it's going to start giving traffic to you and me and James and everybody else that's pinning stuff. And, and bringing it all together, which is genius. That's genius viral marketing. And it says pinned on board, so you can edit the board there. That's the board that we pinned it on. Not only that, we can like it in Facebook. We can tweet it. We can embed the image. So if it's a really cool image, like an infographic or, you know, on Facebook how these, these celebrity stuff go viral, people will embed it, and then you can get traffic from it. And then, obviously, you can report the pin via policies and stuff like that, and you can email it. So you can email yourself a pin. So it, the viral aspect of Pinterest is out of this world, and, and it's only going to get better when they're talking about private pin boards and stuff like that. Um, and the API access, I mean, you if you know anything about Internet marketing or Internet in general, when you have access to an API, what does that do? Insane stuff. When I can access the Pinterest API, what does that mean I can do? I can pull stuff. I can pull pins. I can pull relevant terms. I can pull all kinds of content information into something else that benefits me, right? So so you can set up a board for real estate agents listening to Yeah, yeah. One of the cool things is you can create a, a Pinterest account. So the question was, can you set up a real estate board for real estate agents and houses and stuff like that all day long? Real estate agents need to be on Pinterest because they're going to get traction, right? They're going to get uh, backlinks and stuff like that. But you could set up, okay? And I don't see how this is inside. And I mean, there's a couple of guys doing this. And I researched it, and we tested it, and it worked. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't set up a, a directory on here and charge people for it. There's no reason. I can't see why you couldn't. People do it on Facebook. I know Facebook's uh, TOS is open is openly written, so that that way, at any time, they can change it. Uh, Pinterest is pretty strongly written, so there's really no way to sway away from it. And I, I come to the conclusion that there's no reason why you couldn't. So you could charge like a link directory or a directory or just, you know, set up a real estate agent blog and then set up this Pinterest to run to the blog and uh, link wheel it and get them a lot of traffic. Yeah, you can do that. And what you can do, see, I, I didn't, sorry, 
The, the question was, could you show a, a physical product? That's what Pinterest basically is. That's the, the reason for it. Link to your website and sell the product. Yes. You could probably sell the product prior to, like, they're going to be sold probably. That's why they're going to. That's why Martha Stewart did $3 million, right? Um, if we edit this image, I'm going to show, I don't know why it didn't show up on here, but it's got the price there. I don't know if the image isn't big enough or if there's a glitch in there. It's picking it up now. So as you can see, if I put a price in here, it's going to put that banner in the corner with the price. Okay? And that is, look, guys, that's searchable. It's not an image, right? So the Google's going to associate that number with that stuff. Yeah, I mean, a local directory, I'm not going to tell you everything I do, but it works. <laughs> For sure. You can create like a yellow pages on here. And as this gets more traction, there's, you're going to see people doing stuff. And like I said, the, the guy with the scam, the, that got claimed the scammer, he really wasn't scamming anybody, but the media has to play off something. They have to find something wrong with something, right? If everything was right in the world, they would have nothing to report on. So they have to create an issue. So they created an issue out of that kid. And you know what's crazy? He's still making the money. I'm on one of the forms that he's on. Still making the money. Not a big deal. All people got to do is not click it. Simple as that. He's doing it legally. There's nothing illegal about what he's doing. He's not. He's playing inside the TOS. So I have no problem with it. Uh, do you mean I can have a dog site or a dog product site, or is it too commercial? No, whatever. Do whatever you want to do. Like I said, the only thing that I see wrong in Pinterest right now is porno, pornographical stuff. So you could have dog. Well, let's search. Let's search up dog training. Actually, let's see what kind of keywords come up if we search dog. Dog. Internet slows is not going to show up. Ridiculous. So we search dog training in there. Look what comes up. Tons of stuff. Tons of stuff. I know, I know there's a lag, so it's catching up for you guys. Pinterest is a, a bandwidth hog all day long, for sure. So it should catch up in a second. No, um, there's a question, how will people start coming to my site? All they do is they click on the image, and then you'll have your link inside the description, and the image will be a link to your website. So, holy crap, did it go to webinar freeze up? James, can you see the, the dog training stuff? Yeah, you can see it? Okay. I think my audience view is skipping there. Okay. So as you can see here, look, it's got the, 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 the barking stuff, the collar. All these have prices on them, right? So they're all going to go to the websites that's selling them. Um, this lady's got dog training and behavior aid. So I guarantee you, uh, I'll say probably 80% to 90% of these guys are just affiliate marketers. I would have to say that all day long. And here's a cool little image, right? So people will click on that, and you could repin that and have that go to your site. Or here's some cool-looking little pugs. I used to have a pug. His name was Puggers. <laughs> They're nice dogs until they get big. Um, Amazon sites, yes. Okay, why is it brilliant to be doing on Amazon? I know a kid that's pulling down half a million dollars doing Amazon links. Why was it prior to about three or four weeks ago not good to be doing it? Because as soon as you posted an Amazon link, uh, Pinterest uh, skim linked you, and they made the money. So right now, Pinterest is, uh, looks very saturated. Nah, don't worry about it. Just try it out. If it is saturated, get a different angle on it. You know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do to tweak stuff. And just because, I mean, I know this is jumping off, but I've seen that question come up. I have uh, pages on Facebook. Okay, I had the second biggest page on Facebook. I started off, I was one of 100 pages on Facebook. I grew that page to 1.7, no, 1.2 million people, and it was for an actor, and it was a fan page for the actor. The page that was biggest to mine um, was, oh, I see. don't worry about pricing right now, <laughs> Johnny. Um, if, if the page that was second to mine had 100,000, I grew it to be 102, and I made 800 a day from that page, and it was in a, in a, in a niche that had 100 other pages that had a lot of people. So once you understand the strategy, don't worry about competition. I know a lot of marketers, oh, this is a saturated market, don't worry about this or that. 
once you understand how to market online and how to do keywords, stuff like this, because this isn't keyword research, you can bang up a board with tons of keywords, SEO, stuff like that, um, and, and curation um, within five to ten minutes, right? Whereas you'd have to, if you're putting up a blog, you'd spend hours, right? I hate work. I hate working for long hours. James knows this. I do work long hours, but it's because in between there, I'm like surfing YouTube and watching like planes and stuff like that. So <laughs> that's why I'm on the internet till like six, seven o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah, so don't worry about it. So I jump back to the other question. What was the other question that we're Amazon site? Yeah, so uh, they were using skim links. They now have taken skim links out, made it public. So now you can use um, Amazon, and there's kids pulling down half a million dollars that I know of right now using that exact thing. I don't know what his commission is, but he's doing a, a 500000 in sales. In Canada, we only get paid, I think, at 3%. In the States, they get 8%. So even at 8%, he's still going to make, what, forty grand? I think that would be. So that's not too bad from using free traffic from a free site. Is this good to get indexed for a local market? Yep. Yep, dog training, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, so you could put dog training, consulting, whatever in the text, like I showed you, Michael Somerville, and Dallas, Texas inside there. It's going to know from the mapping, and then you use the hashtag Dallas, Texas, dog training, and you'll get searched. Like, you may, you might think that nobody's searching in that box. I had, I launched a, a $1,000 Facebook product, and everybody's like, there's no reason why I need to be found in that search box on Facebook, okay? The following day, and this was so ironic, the following day, Facebook released that their search box is used more than uh, Google. Their search traffic surpassed Google. Like, that's crazy. Google's a mammoth, right? So their search traffic surpassed Google. Everybody knows that. That's been the context for years now. Um, and, uh, yeah, so if you think nobody's using that search box, I would doubt it. Well, let's ask, uh, where, what was that lady's name that said she's addicted? Julie. Is Julie still on the call? Get a little bit of uh, interaction going here. Julie, you still there? Maybe? No? What I was going to ask, I was going to ask, because she said she was addicted to Pinterest. So I was going to say, do you use the search box? I know people are using that search box. They haven't released any... Uh, yeah, so do you, do you use the uh, the search box, Julie? Or Julia, sorry. She says, I'm so addicted, and yes, yes, in, high, in caps. I wish I could screenshot that and show you guys. She says, I use it. So there you go. That's coming right from, from the user. So that search box is used. So the, the keyword terms, the hashtags are so relevant, it's unreal. So... I think you guys get a pretty good gist of what's going on on Pinterest now. Like, you, pretty good idea what's possible, what you know, what you can do with it. We're hitting nine thirty here. I don't want to keep everybody too late, but I want to just share a couple more things. Boom! Awesome! Awesome! You guys are awesome. All right, let's get back to these slides right here. Oh, actually, no, I want to show you guys one other thing, one other thing, one other thing. Where's my uh, Firefox? Okay. I want to show you, this is pretty important, because I didn't show you how to do it, but I'm going to show you um, the results of it. Inside, when you create a board, it can say, who wants to pin to this? And it can be just me, or you can say, with, can, with other people. And the other people is a really cool tool. So there's two ways you could, you could run a viral contest on Pinterest, okay? I've done this, works beautifully. You can do a pin it to win it, which is they go to your website or something, QR code on an offline poster or something like that, and they use a QR code and then they can pin it with their iPhone or Android um, app for Pinterest. And then you could search and then the winner would get that, right? So this contest ran for a while. They got a bunch of stuff. There's Travelocity and there's a bunch of other travel agents that do this every day to list bill and then they give away a free um, travel voucher. And that's what they're doing. So this one was just a pin it to win it. You pin the image, and then they searched it, and then they found you, and you won. There is um, there is uh, other stuff that they do where they, they pin images to a board on that brand, and then people commented on it and stuff like that, and it worked out well. Yeah, hashtags is a keyword. 
and hashtags is a a, Q, uh, a, curie, a, a curie. It's a search curie. So you can uh, you can get it. Thanks. Yeah. So the the when it becomes a hashtag, it then becomes a search link, and then you can, that's what you would search and query inside Pinterest. Uh, Getting the call here, so I just had to end that. So here's what Kraft Foods did. Kraft Foods did a pinnace to win it, and this was huge. This was like in the media. This was ridiculously huge. They did it, and they gave away a $200 craftstore.com voucher. Okay, it was huge. They have their own craft recipes, Pinterest uh, email. They have craft recipes. You can go to it right now, pinterest.com forward slash craft recipes. This thing was huge. They had people pinning recipes, and they got they won stuff. So it just shows the power of Pinterest using different ways to do it. And I wanted to show you that why? Because it is. I mean, when I started doing it, blew my mind on using uh, contests, pin it to win it, and profit. Okay, if you got a pen and paper, I want to give you two things right now. I want to give you write down pin at quote dot com. Pinnacle.com is where you go and you type text and then it makes it an image. How powerful is that? So you can just type text into something and make it an image. So if you could type your website into an, uh, an image, pin it, and away you go. Right? So that's pretty cool. Type, uh, write down pinreach.com. Pinreach.com is a metrics that gives you uh, metrics on how you're doing, how many pins you're doing, your influence shows you top influencers, and um, it's a really cool tool. And there's another one here, calculate your, your pinfluence, and that's pin, pinpuff.com. Really cool site. Really, really cool site to check out. I wanted to make sure I gave you uh, some cool tools to grab when you got off this webinar. So that's a cool tool. So let's jump back into the slides. We're at an hour and a half now. Where's my slide? Where's my slide? There we go. The first one was uh, pinaquote.com. James, if you want to type uh, pinaquote.com in there, uh, pinpuff.com, and pinreach.com, and then they can grab those links. No, just do it once. Once you have, uh, once you're linked once, you can invite yourself un unlimitedly. You just want to click an invite and then send it to your email. That's what I do. <laughs> so I email myself, and then I actually I only use the one code to create the account. Oh yeah, you then you, you're gonna you will need a Twitter account or a Facebook account to link it. But just uh, you can just create a Twitter account in two seconds. Get inside it, and then you don't need to do anything with that Twitter account. Go, go cancel it because it doesn't need to do anything afterwards. It's just to get in. Why? Because they want to go viral, right? So that's all that matters. You can create random. I have like 500 Twitter accounts or something. This is insane, and I cancel them all. Okay, so I don't know if you if if you if you're really interested. I don't do hard pitches or anything like that. That's not the type of guy I am. We have created an in-depth course on this. And it's actually right now, in the last 24 hours, I changed a bunch of stuff. So there's new videos getting uploaded right now. Um, so we created this in-depth course that not only shows what I've showed you on this webinar, but it takes it to the next level, shows you how to do it more efficiently, more effectively, and a bunch of stuff. And what we're doing is we're creating this course, and it's going to be evergreen. So it's a lifetime membership, and as Pinterest grows, so does Pinterest. And I know Pinterest is a weird name, but I, I couldn't get another keyword domain. <laughs> and I liked Pinterest. So I'm like, ah, Pinterest, Pinterest. Uh, so it's going to be an evergreen course that you can refer to on an ongoing basis for resources and posts and relevant stuff and support and help. So if you've got an offline client that, you know, they want to jump on Pinterest and you're like, ah, I don't know if I can figure out a strategy, jump in there, we'll help you. So that's what we're doing. Um, so. What is included? There's like, I think, 10 modules right now, plus a bunch of bonus modules on, on keyword local stuff and, and shows you how to do car dealerships and real estate agents and affiliate blogs and stuff like that and how to do it with Pinterest. So you can show you how to use Pinterest properly, shows you how to channel referral traffic through Pinterest to build lists, shows you how to create funnels, converting customers, local marketing, like like I said, for you know the plumbers and the 
resorts and stuff like that, plus a ton of resources. And I only gave you three, and I got like a ton in there. So that's what we're, we got going on. So what is it? A lifetime access with updates and support. And because you're on this webinar, I always like to give you guys, because you stick with me, I always like to give you a bonus. So we're going to do another live coaching webinar where we're going to basically take case studies so you can come at me with something and we'll create a strategy on the webinar. And that's going to be a group webinar. And uh, so we'll do some live stuff, some, some extra help, and you can come on there with something and, and we'll create it right on right live. So if you've got a cool thing that you, you need help with, we'll create it live. So that's an added bonus. Um, so what prices could you call this? Well, I mean, like I said, I usually sell high-end stuff, high-end marketing, uh, high-end coaching. If you're an offline business, we usually charge a lot just to even be in the office with us. So I thought, well, you know, we could charge $297 plus $497 for the webinar, and it could be like an $800 course. And then I'm thinking, you know what, that, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because I want to, basically, I need people to come into Pinterest because it is a new course. We have some students in there right now. Um, that we did on another webinar and, and through my, my students already. Um, but I want to, you know, I need more people to not only help them, I want you to be able to, to make money from this. So if you come in at 800 bucks, you're going to be scrounging to recover your investment right away. So I didn't want to worry about, I don't want you to worry about your investment. I don't want you to worry about anything. So I thought, what if we did a $97 one-time fee? If you, you guys, do you see a ton of value in this that for lifetime, as long as Pinterest is open, that you can have an access to this course that's updated as Pinterest updates, that you can have access to resources and stuff like that in support, live support, stuff like that, for 97 bucks. One time, that's it. You don't got to pay us any other money. Does that, does that seem really valuable to you? Awesome. Awesome. Like I, like, I wanted to make it so that it was affordable, that you could afford it, not hurt your pocketbook, and you could make money on it. So you could easily make $400 profit on this transaction by helping somebody else out all day long. And we're going to show you. 